Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to bring the uh, this joint meeting to uh, to order. Uh, first, let's uh, first uh, let's start off by uh, uh, electing the uh, chair. You guys in? Yep. We're in. So, who wants the chair? Thanks, me. I nominate Mr. Yeah. Patino to be the chair. Second. Those yeah. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Let's get going. All right. So on the uh, on the agenda, the first thing is the uh, FY19 budget request discussion. As uh, many of you know, as we left, uh, Last week we were um, looking at the, um, the possibility of a large uh, override and we were all tasked with uh, cutting out budgets by a million or so dollars. And um, how did we do? Yes, um, with your permission, Mr. Chair, we have Todd Hassett. He's the consultant who has been working with us as the ancient finance director and did the bulk of the work reviewing um, one of the uh, reports that I'll be sharing with you all in terms of where we are. Uh, as the chair said, when we last met, we had a $2.6 million budget gap. Uh, there was some discussion amongst the board of selectmen and suggestions that we uh, go back, review our budget, and identifying cuts. Uh, there, there was a number that was put out there. I think it was 1.5 million. And this is where we are now since, since that conversation. To help you along, to help you along, uh, there's a handout that we've put forth. Uh, there's a sheet right in front. Uh, the first sheet will explain, that will explain the changes that we've occurred. And then right behind, on page two uh, is the text increase summary. You've noticed uh, we have adjusted the format that we use for depicting this information. Uh, I'll have to explain how and why. Uh, the reason basically being we want to comply with the UR formula. And then followed by that is a detailed explanation of our data exclusions. And why we included this is because they are the primary driver behind the big change uh, in our uh, budget, uh, budget access levy or budget levy calculation. And then followed by that is a history of the uh, towns <coughs> with exclusions uh, related to our maximum allowable levy as well as the annual levy capacity uh, going back to 2009. And then we have the summary budget sheet. Uh, we are familiar with this format, this is the format that we have used. However, I think going forward, uh, I may be proposing that we rearrange this spreadsheet uh, with the idea of first categorizing the revenues and then detailing the expenses. And I think we all understand why. And then uh, I will put the detailed departmental budget uh, identifying the reductions that we have accomplished or identified uh, since the first last week. And thus, going back to the beginning of the handout, here's what has changed in terms of our revenue sources, um, as well as uh, uh, expenditures. We have identified prospective budget reductions in the amount of 391,751. Also, and told will be detailed in this, we identified new dates that was issued on uh, November 15th of 2017. Our previous budget model calculations had not checked at this number. Uh, it's 2 million dollars and then state A, uh, as you know, uh, we did receive the governor's proposed budget, and um, our state A revenue goes up by 435,476 net of the state charges. And then available funds, 
we have identified approximately 27,000 of unused balances in our capital articles. I should mention, this is a number that we are continuing to review. Uh, specifically, our auditor has reported that there are issues we need to take a deeper look into uh, regarding our unused capital balances. And secondly, we also are looking at the process regarding how we have booked this in units. So this is a number that we'll continue to review uh, and it may be changed going forward. And given these changes, uh, as well as considering the, the, the budget request that we have discussed previously, uh, we now have a surplus of 576,660. And at this point, I can maybe just uh, permission, I'll let Todd explain to you what we've been doing in terms of scrubbing our financial data to make sure that uh, going forward we have accurate information relative to our revenues and expenditures. Todd. Uh, thank you, Norman. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, sorry, I couldn't be with you this evening. Um, so uh, I've been with the town for a couple of weeks. Um, I've been on site for three days, um, one of which was primarily focused on a tidying up FY17 with respect to getting the balance sheet uh, filed with the Department of Revenue and looking through the draft audit report. Um, and Substantially, the other two days, I've really focused on trying to, as Norman said, scrub the the budget uh, plan and, and really sort of validate um, a lot of the items, particularly the sources of funds um, available to fund uh, next year's operating and capital budget. In particular, um, as Norman pointed out, um, what I did notice um, early on was that the debt exclusion number didn't seem to be accurate but it was being carried in the plan and as it turns out it um, did not uh, include the 24.7 million dollar uh, sale that the town did this past fall in november that sale had um, i believe eight different purposes made up the 24 million uh, four of which were excluded by the voters and four of which uh, would need to be paid within the levy limit. So the, the annual debt service principal and interest payments uh, in the first year, which is next school uh, fiscal year 19, um, which included the center school, the fire station roof, the DPW facility, <coughs> Uh, and I believe there's a fourth one which escapes me, but these it's, four... It, it was Hayden, Hayden Road traffic improvement. Thank you. Thank you, Hayden Road. Um, these four um, had about just over two or three million dollars of principal and interest payments scheduled for next year. They were in the debt service budget on the expense side, but they had not been included uh, what had been included previously in the debt exclusion estimate was all the pre-existing debt that was um, levied in fiscal 18 in the current year. Um, so that allowed us to uh, close a substantial portion of the shortfall. Um, in addition, um, we've gone through budgets and Norman's recommending um, just under 400000 of reductions to a variety of budgets. Uh, we're currently, uh, as he said, uh, we've dropped in the governor's <coughs> proposed budget and, and what that aid looks like for Hopkinton. As you know, that process will go through the House and the Senate and there'll be a, a committee, conference committee, and, and it will take a while to settle out. But um, previous to this, the mod budget model was uh, assuming a level funded state aid. And lastly, we, we went through and verified the category of other available funds, which uh, includes Title V septic loans, repayments, uh, ambulance receipts reserve, and as Norman pointed out, where we really made the, the modest change was around analyzing uh, available unused capital uh, balances that can be reappropriated by town meeting for new capital purposes. Um, so with that, um, we've been able to um, improve the town's budget position 
projected uh, uh, from a shortfall to a, a modest of just under six hundred thousand uh, dollar surplus at this time. And there are a number of things um, still in play, not the least of which is, is the weather and, and how our snow deficit may may grow or, or change. Uh, so we'll be monitoring that and and uh, other article requests and things that might come before us that we're not aware of at this time, but at this time. Mr. Chair. Todd, uh, Brian Herr, one of the selectmen here in town. So can you explain to us, uh, there's about 30 people around the table, uh, 28 of us are lay people not familiar with how these numbers come together on this debt service and this $2 million uh, magically appearing. Explain to us how that sort of got missed in your opinion and how we found it. Uh, I just, I don't get that at all. Uh well, I, I'll do my best, Brian. Um, the, um, I think we had um, input from the treasurer's office uh, with, and maybe with the help of the town's financial advisory firm to um, confirm all of the, the total debt um, service requirements for next year, which exceeds 12 million, which includes uh, our water and sewer obligations. But the, the general obligations to be funded through through um, the general fund were just over nine million, as I recall, um, and that was fully and properly budgeted. Um, it looked like in the budget model there was, and it, you've probably seen it, it's a large workbook. It looked like that there was a pre-existing worksheet uh, that had been populated with a total of, of the debt exclusion the principal and interest by fiscal year going forward, um, and that, that that particular file had never been updated to reflect the issuance of new debt in November. Um, so I, I'm not sure exactly who or where or why there was a disconnect, but clearly um, uh, I went through every every issue and validated, you know, it's about a page and a half um, of details just to make sure that that this was correct and, and it, it became clear that um, the file was pre-existing probably from last year's model uh, and had not been updated for these uh, four items that were part of the fall issuance. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Um, I think, in, in fact, I think the the last entries on that on that web book may have been around August of 2017. Sure. And we've had some personnel changes as part of this process. Yes. When did that take place? Um, can you remember? Last year, in the 21st of December. Technically, uh, yeah, actually. Technically. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Any other questions for Todd? Todd, Todd is only going to be with us for the next uh, 12 minutes. He has another engagement that's okay. So, uh, Todd, this is John Katina, the chair. Um, so, the actual money that the town owes has not changed. We just, stuff. some stuff is just pushed off. But yeah, so the, the amount that the town owes uh, that was in the budget, earlier budget models, uh, has not changed, that's correct. Um, but there were certain components um, within that that the voters had, had uh, agreed by a ballot to pay additional taxes on. You know, by a debt exclusion. And um, as I say, the, the, the eight items that were part of the multi-purpose uh, loan uh, from November, four of those, um, as it turned out, and, and I did confirm this with the town clerk's office, four of them were approved by the voters, um, and four of them, uh, you know, were within our levy limit. So it was that piece that, that had been missed, if you will, or not included in the levy limit source of funds um, calculation. It, that part had never been updated. And we still got to go 
do an update for fiscal 2020 forward, um, and, I, and I'll be working with the governor's <coughs> office to get that sorted out over the next week or two. So what Norman handed out tonight, I believe, does not show you the subsequent years after 2019 because we, we've got some more work to do to get that right. So, so this this means that that those debt excluded items are going to be paid outside the normal levy, uh, but still charged to the taxpayers, right? So, so the impact to the taxpayers, even though it moves out of the operating budget lines, still stays on when we do our tax calculations in the fall and set the rate with the board of assessors, correct? Correct. Yes, sir. Yep. I think that's important for us all to understand. That while we're fixing quote the operating budget, we're not changing the impact necessarily for taxpayers. Yeah, and, and and I gotta say, you know, I'm looking at this, and this is one of those bittersweet things. You know, you come in here and you see a number, and it looks like, all right, you know, we don't have to have any type of an override. That's step one. You know, it's still not getting us down to. You know the, the typical under two and a half percent increase that we like to achieve but then i look at these numbers and you know out of out of the complete change uh you know what, what are we looking at for a swing um you know over three well over three million dollars less than four hundred thousand dollars of it actually came from any kind of cuts and of that one hundred and eighty thousand dollars of it was because the bus contract was less than we anticipated that's what I'm assuming from when I read, read mm -hmm. paper. So I look at that and look at mm -hmm. what we were asking to happen since the last meeting, and I really don't see anything happen since the last meeting. Incredibly minor, um, which tells me that either we didn't go at it with a sharp enough pencil in the last, and when I say we, you know, it's a collective we, you know, uh, we didn't go at it with a sharp enough pencil or we're at, in a situation where everything in this budget is absolutely necessary and basically the taxpayers had better hold on for the next few years because it's going to come and it's going to come hard. You know, we're, we're maybe, you know, getting away with no override this year, but, you know, this doesn't bode well for future years. And on top of that, even this $576,000, you know, surplus as it's, as it's written here, uh, that comes at the expense of not putting anything into OPEB and not putting anything, uh, you know, into any other reserves. So, you know, I still think we're screwed <laughs> unless, unless we do something. So I, I, I'm just trying to understand where we are with sort of balancing it. Yeah. I haven't gotten to the budget piece yet, so that's, I'm with you, but I think we still all have some work to do there because we're, if we just, March down the path we're on right now. Yeah, we can clear the operating budget without an override. We're still going way above two and a half, which technically is an override in a lot of taxpayers' minds. Uh, but then we're going to have all kinds of other debt excluded items mm -hmm. set the tax rate this fall, and we're going to have these budgets that are extremely high year over year. That next year we're going to have to pay for again, plus the two and a half or three on top of that because of the cost of living and everything else. Yep. So I, I'm not. I haven't got into the whole budget piece yet, at least in my small brain over here. Yeah. For the information, um, the, the second page of the handout has the details on the tax increase summary. And, and again, what we tried to do was to uh, show the information uh, to fit into changes from FY 2018 uh, to FY 19. Um, and also it's important we try to extrapolate and identify what the impact would be on the average budget of the and hoping to take the five hundred and seventy one thousand. So based on this spreadsheet that I'm looking at the taxes are going to go up 7.10% this year? That would be for existing single-family homes, yes. So that's not taking it. 
Uh, you know, it's not including the new growth, for example, the two million you see up above, two million seventy-five. So, um, what what that was attempting to do at the bottom was to show what the existing single-family homeowner might expect if values stayed the same year to year. Uh, it would be you're right, just about a little over a seven percent increase um, to the average single-family homeowner. So if we back the two million out of that, or we add the two million into that, that's um, <coughs> three percent roughly. A little bit more three. three so we're looking at a four percent rough increase. Is that fair? Frank, if it was going to ask, are you asking? Uh, are you referring to the increase from uh, 2018 to 2019 in the levy limit, or the overall tax? The overall tax impact of the taxpayers throw new net throw new growth into it, which is really a two million dollar uh, uh, savings to the current taxpayer, right? So that takes that seven percent down to about four percent. No. Go ahead, Mike. I think the, there was a confusing statement in there when you're talking about not including the new growth, but I think the 7% impact takes into account the $2 billion in new growth. So there is no uh, decrease. So it's not, it, it would be the overall tax impact with all the debt exclusions and the, assuming the new growth, it will be 7, seven point. So that's net new growth. Yes. I think that was a little confusing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So while we've solved the override problem, it appears, right, which none of us really want to go to, we have not solved the tax impact problem with, with, this, with the spending plan that's in place today. So my sense is a lot of the energy in the last couple of weeks, for good reason, went into scrubbing the books and getting us to square one accurately. And I appreciate all that. But I think to Mr. Sestari's point a few minutes ago, we still have to do the work now of what do we really need of REF Y19. We, we also did include in the information packet some. Some is the operative word. I don't think there's enough. Yeah, I mean, basically, if you discount the 180000 on the bus contract, which isn't really a cut. You know, it's, less of an it, it's less of an increase, and it's because it's what we need. Um, you know, we're looking at the proposed cuts are less than what a quarter of a percent of our whole budget. Uh, seems like it seems like we should be doing better than that. <clears throat> Chairperson, how does the school committee look in this? Um, well, you know, you already noted that we, we submitted our new number, which reflects the uh, savings that we were able to negotiate in our bus contract, obviously. And I think as we discussed last time, you know, we've already been through a couple of rounds of reductions, and absolutely, if, you know, if that's the message and, and you all have, have done the same thing, we all need to go back then. It will go back. We sort of held tight at that point, um, waiting for the updated numbers. Uh, you know, so our meeting was in between our last joint meeting and, and tonight. Um, you know, the other thing that we talked a little bit about and certainly can do, although it wouldn't necessarily come straight out of our budget, we can certainly look at some of our capital items um, and whether we can defer some of those and take some money out of pay as you go, which could put money back into the operating budget for the town. Um, you know, that's probably the next thing we would look at before we would start to talk about a reduction in teachers and the program um, because that part of our budget is already, uh, we have already reduced that throughout the course of our own process um, to the point where this is a comfort level. Um, but again, we understand that we're all in together and if that's where you have to go after the capital article, so that's going to be a very difficult conversation, but certainly we don't have to have it. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Dr. No. 
<clears throat> it's right, you know, we really all have to come back and prioritize because, you know, to, to, to go to the taxpayers and tell them that we're going up 7.1% for, uh, for the next year is it's, it's unacceptable. Even though, you know, we have, yes, we do have a new DPW facility, we have a new library, we have all this new, the new school and all this new stuff. You know, it, it means that we have to cut in other places. And the same thing happens to us all with our own home budgets. It's the same thing, you know, we, when we get something new, something has to go. We've got to do something. You know, I, I really thought that, that we were going to, uh, uh, you know, that, that this was, you know, this, this is really just shifting money. You know, that's why I asked that question. We still owe it. As a town, we still owe that money. And it just means we're doing what the, what the federal government does and the state government does. So we're, we're just pushing it down. You know, this, the, government, the federal government gets to print out more money. We just pushed it out 20 years. And so we're doing the exact same thing. You know, we have to live within our means, even though even though we have all this new fun stuff, and maybe it means that we can't buy all new furniture for it. Maybe, like, you know, I remember buying my, my new house 20 years ago here in Hopkinton. We had two rooms with no furniture in it for about five or six years. Um, you know, we have to look at stuff like that and and, and know that, that we can't have everything. We just can't have everything. You know, we've got to go back and cut. Um, you know, this seems like what this happened last year when I, when I felt terrible that I said to everybody, look, we can't go over 3%. And um, we tried meeting and we met with the, you know, we all met and said we're going to keep our budgets low. We had, we had meeting after meeting. And then at the last minute, all of our budgets exploded from 25 percent to 6, 7, 7.5%. We got to do better. Just got to do better. We, 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 you know, we were elected to to watch the watch this budget as if it was our own. And it is our own. It's all our own money. You know, it, it, you know, we hear stuff all the time about CPC money and all that stuff, like it's free money. No, if you look on your tax bill, it's a lie. We're on all the tax bills, all of this stuff. We have to watch out for them for, for all this. This is 7.1. I know I'm going on, but 7.1 is just scary to look at. Well, I think that I think that you know through this, I'm just going to call it an exercise for lack of a better term, the process. I think we need to focus. Um, we need to look at all of the different articles, capital articles, but I think we need to look at the operational budgets because all those other articles are voted on at town meeting, and they we don't know if they're going to pass or not. So you know you can propose things out of those and. They may fail anyway, even if you don't propose them. Um, this is what we have direct control over in terms of affecting taxes, is what we're presenting to the townspeople. Um, it's rare that it's rare that at town meeting they're going to look at the operational budgets and start picking things out to you know cut a little bit here, and cut a little bit there, so that that 7.1 percent goes down to whatever. Um, but everything else is fully in their hands. So I think we need to look at the operational budgets. I think we also need to look at everything else, you know, the, the capital the capital requests as well. And we need to, you know, try to try to cut as much as we can. Well town meeting is not the place to certainly start because the budget is yeah. happening right. by us. And the last thing we want to do is for this board to impose cuts. It's always better for the individual departments to come to their decisions on their own. Um, you know, and, and also, as I think Mr. Starry said, it's a scary thought to think that next year, this, whatever we end up with this year, that's going to be sort of the baseline starting point building on for the following um, year. And, you know, across the board, all the budget increases were way higher than any of us anticipated. Even, even in October and December, we were doing some of the budgeting. So I know a lot of the focus is directed towards the school committee, and rightly so, because that is the lion's share of the budget. But it's not the only part. And, and understandably, you know, turn first to school committee, because it's the biggest one. But it, we're all, you know, Norman always talks about one Hopkinton. We all make up the whole. And 
frankly, I would like to hear from all the other individual departments as to where they think they can make some reductions. And they may be small relative to the size of their budget, but by the time you add them all up, you know, you'll have some you'll have some sizable reductions. And to the people who are going to be asked to pay for this, I think we owe it to them to see an effort on every single part, every department, of really separating out the wants from the needs. So I, I'd like to hear from everybody who's got a part of this budget, not just the school committee. Mr. Kamal, so in the last week or two, when was the last meeting was this a week ago or two weeks ago? Um, my sense is, and tell me if I'm wrong, <coughs> my sense is you kind of told the department heads, hang out, let me figure that out, let's scrub the sheets, let's make sure we got everything sorted out and accurate first before we go do what Mrs. Wright is describing. Is that a fair statement? Um, not entirely uh, complete. That was part of the process we embarked on. The other part was we actually met as a group and went through the individual projects and identified some projected cuts. And we have included the projected cuts in, uh, in, in the information we shared with you tonight. So if we have done that, and that's in these numbers here, and I hate to use very bad news, but we need to do that again, because there's not enough. And this is Starry's point, I think everyone else's point. And we need to find more. So, um, if we found, if we found, if we found, it was the number four hundred and some thousand dollars, all in, and one hundred eighty. That was the bus contract. Four hundred thirty-five. No, three ninety-one. Three ninety-one. We found three hundred ninety-one thousand. One hundred eighty. That was that. Was the bus. So okay, there's a like two hundred grand. We found two hundred grand out of eighty million. Okay, so there's another 180 on top of that. Okay, fair enough. All right, I mean, I still think we're rough math. We're, we're still 2%, a million too off, right? That rough math on the levy? About 60 million? What's the total levy right now? Yeah, 7.1 meter. That's the total limit. Right. What's the total levy? Did it, what are we taxing on an annual basis? Is it like so 60 or 70 million dollars? Yeah. If I could jump in, this year's levy was just under 63 million. Okay, so 630K is the point. Yep. So two points is a million two. A million two is two points. Two points goes from 7% to 5%. Now we're back in that inside the excess levy world, including including what's going to be picked up in the fall. You know what I'm saying? So that would be my target. If I had to pick a number, this is right, that we would want to go around the table and try and find is a million two. At least a million two. At least. The good thing about doing budgets earlier in the year in advance of town meeting is we have more time <laughs> to do these things and go through the machinations, you know. We're doing this on May 3rd, like we used to years past, the night before or the night of. Of course, there's a little bit more decision making, but I think with, with additional time comes a slower process to get to the real number. So if I could get it clear in my head, it looks like we fixed the override budget by balancing the operating budget, but we're still spending way too much. Um, I think we need to try again and come back with some pretty, some pretty heavy cuts to get us down to where we need to go. And, the more times we come and meet together like this, and you guys come with 100,000 a year, and it's almost like you're buying a used car. 
Like I know that people are hedging their bets. I know that people have a little bit of money in their pockets to give back, and it's not here. So you don't want to run hopping like we're buying a used car. So everybody wants 200 more teachers. We want 50 more firefighters. We want 75 more you know, jobs. You know, I take exception to the way you're saying it. I'm hitting every budget. Uh, I'm, I'm using it. 50 more now. firefighters. I just. If you want to give me my chance to present sometime, I'm ready for it. Um, I'm worried what I ask for isn't enough to have level service. So if you want to cut the service, then we'll talk. But I mean, just the way you just said that, that's ridiculous. So as much as you're not asking for 50 firefighters, they're not asking for 200 teachers, and he's not asking for 75 cops. I'm blowing it up. I'm using it as an example, but I'm sorry if that offended you. It does. What I'm saying is that if we have a two and a half million dollar budget that we're trying to, to come down to, and we get two hundred thousand dollars cut in two weeks, it's embarrassing. I don't want to come back every two weeks to have two hundred thousand dollars. And I don't know. I haven't looked at them. I don't know if, you, hey, if you're the one that put two hundred dollars, two hundred thousand. Exactly. We're good to go. Thank you. Okay. So. Exactly. Thank well, you. Well, I, I, what, what I think my colleague is saying is <clears throat> we may not be able to afford level service. You know, we were talking about with the schools, we're trying to keep up on a level of excellence. But again, it's what at what price at what price is excellence? You know, we we're the you know and, and with the, with the police, you know, what are we number number four fourth safest community for, for, for that? We're the we're the third best high school. But if we can't afford it, you can't afford it. So, so, so we have to figure out, so then that's why we have to prioritize stuff as you know, what we're doing. You know, like with, with, uh, Mr. Westerling last, last week was, we, we needed $200,000 to, to put into the road so that in five years we don't have to pay several million dollars. You know, we have to think, do we pay the insurance or, do we, or, or don't we? Do we, you know, do we, do we, you know, what teachers do we keep, what don't we? But the same thing with the firefighters. And, and the, the ambulance services and everything else. So, what are our priorities as a town? Well, yeah. But I mean, that's a general statement that everybody's budget has things that we need to look at. But you know, much of this is unmistakably driven by new growth, and the new growth is affecting every single department. But you know, some are more drastically affected. Than others, and there are some services that are we are less able to do without or reduce than others. This is where you do come down to the needs and wants. I mean, I recognize, for instance, there are things in the school budget that are driven by the students that enroll. They don't have a lot of choice. They have to educate those students. And some of the emergency services, we don't want an ambulance call to come in and for them to have to say, we can't get to you, or somebody's house burned down because they're all out on another call. So I think we will have to look at these and make some hard decisions. Some of these things are necessities, and, and you know we should be willing as a town to recognize that and fund that. But I'm sure that in there, there are other things that aren't someone's house burning down. There are things that may be more want, um, or things that can be put off, and that's where we need to take a hard-eyed look. And, and I am sure that the people of this town will understand and be willing to fund things that really affect our day-to-day -day quality of life, but we need to feel that we've really taken a we know we always we're always talking about the, the new growth, new growth, new people coming in, new people coming in. But we're also we just got you know well over two million dollars of new growth. Every year we'll be getting in another two million dollars, a million eight, a million four, uh, 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 two million one, two million five. You know, we're we're getting we're, we're getting the, the uh, our our uh, two and a half percent plus every year. In new growth, and so you know, I, I have people come up to me all the time saying, "Well, look, we just got 2.4 million dollars. My taxes should be going down." Yet we're yet we're going up. Yeah, and so that. and so this is this is where you know we were discussing <coughs> at the last meeting too. You know, this new growth. One of the things that uh, you know John Moser always used to talk about, and I know I'm repeating myself, but there's a bigger audience now. Uh, one of the things John Moser used to talk about 
was, okay, this new growth, you know, gets you to tipping points in certain areas where all of a sudden you have a large expenditure to expand whatever service you're delivering, whether it means that, you know, we need to add on to the wastewater treatment facility or build a new fire station, build a new school, add teachers, add whatever. That happens. So there are times where we need to expect that that growth is all of a sudden going to push us up and there's going to be another big step or two steps that we need to climb. And so that's one of the other, that's one of the other things that we need to judge as we're going through this budget. Uh, so, you know, for as long as I've been on the board with Mr. Herr, I know we've always said we didn't want the increase to be any more than two and a half percent. And, you know, through a lot of hard work of the schools and Mr. Kamalo and, and the staff, <coughs> we've been able to achieve that for the last eight years anyway. Um, and we always had that excess levy capacity growing, growing, and growing. And we kept, we blocked that off a couple of times so that we would have more transparency with the taxpayers. Now we're at a point where we need to judge and we need to say, okay, is this, you know, pretty much a one-time jump because of the population growth? And, you know, next year, are we going to be able to get back to 2.5% and maintain that? Uh, or is this something that's going to be recurring? So is it something where, yeah, it's a 7% increase this year, and, you know, if we keep going like this, it's going to be another 7% next year, maybe even, you know, 8 or 9%, and then the year after that, the same. And if that's the case, then that's when everybody needs to regroup and say, all right, is this really what, is this the track that we want to keep? And if it's the track that the taxpayers want to keep, and they want to keep having you know, seven, eight, nine percent increases, uh, you know, then, then that's something that they can vote for at the polls. You know, if it's something that they're not interested in, then, you know, it's our responsibility to, you know, scale back. And if we think that this is a one time and that next year it, it can be much less and back down to two and a half percent, then that's a decision that we can make here too and present it to them. Um, you know, so and, and there of course there are, there are other options in the middle too. You know, let's get this down to five percent, and then next year maybe it's another five percent, and maybe we're able to skirt that override both years, but then get things to level off and say, all right, we spread it over a couple years, and you know now we feel pretty assured that we bumped services up, and you know we've kept the expenses relatively in check with our population growth. So a um, couple of points and then a, maybe I think a suggestion. One, I think the, the passion around the table, I can feel it. It's all good. Okay, this is good. I love the chief going at it a little bit. That's great. I mean, we're all defending our position. We're all concerned about our town. Whether we work here and live here, we live here and we work here, whatever, we're all into it. So that's all good. Okay, so uh, let's take, keep it, you know, to wear it what it is and we, we get it. Uh, two, um, you know, I, I feel very strongly that 5% should be our target tax impact, all in. <clears throat> so that's that 1.2 number. And so then three to Mrs. Wright's point, and without it being binding in any way, shape, or form, I'd like to have a conversation for 10 minutes and just go around the table and say, give me a number <coughs> that you think you can kick into this kitty for savings for FY19. I will not write it down. Brendan will not write it down. We're just going to talk it through and see if we can come up. If we come up with a million dollars and everybody's comfortable, comfortable putting a number on the table, then we'll get into the details over the next week or so with Mr. Kamalo and the team. If we can't, then we know what we're going to have to do a little bit differently, which is thank you all for coming. We appreciate your budgets. We'll be back to you, which is what somebody put in the newspaper recently that I said. Apparently I said that. Okay, I'd rather not do it that way, but if that's what it comes to, that's what it comes to. So by going around the table, we'll know what we have to do. So is that okay if we try to do that? If I may. We are always very deliberate and thoughtful in terms of how we get to this to these numbers. Um at least if I I let people see for themselves. But from my perspective, I think we hear your sentiment, we hear your position. I, I would like us to be thoughtful in terms of how we get that number. 
I think everybody sitting around the table has a number in their head that they know they can live with or without this year or for next year if they have to get there. I think the chief knows what he's willing to be able to do, right? I, I, it wasn't 50 firefighters. I've got to respectfully disagree with you from one point is, and I said it to Norman last week when we started some of these exercises, I said, I don't know if I can come in with what I propose, and I don't even think it's level service. Okay, well, are, that's literal, so this. when I'm sitting here saying, hey, take some money, what am I gambling away? You guys can decide too. I mean, I don't know what I'm even gambling away. Okay, so when we get to you, you'll be zero, and that's fine. But I would like to go around the table to get a feel for this <coughs> so that we know what kind of challenge we have. If everybody agrees at 5%, I mean, that's just my number. Is that a reasonable target at least to talk about that? Sorry? Okay, so. And, and, and I know Mr. Kamala gets nervous when I try to have these ad hoc discussions with everybody, okay? No one's gonna hold anybody to, we're all in this together, we're all gonna massage it together, okay? Over the next month or so. And appropriations are certainly gonna help us. But let's, we gotta get the ball rolling. We're gonna have another meeting two weeks from now, and we're all gonna be sitting around the table looking at each other again, saying, okay, what are we gonna do? Well, we gotta start somewhere, right? Yep. And this is the second Thursday meeting we've had. We've had two meetings. <laughs> we got to get into this at some point. So, Mr. Westerling. Yes, sir. A number, please. Don't so, look at him. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get keep your eyes over here. Keep your eyes over here. Don't look at me. Don't be talking about him. So, I, I was just going through, through my budget, and I identified <coughs> one, two, three, four areas where we could have a reduction in service. It would equate to $130,000. Okay, $130,000. But that means I want to make sure that you understand it's a reduction in service of road quality, uh, recycling center, hazardous waste collection. So those type things. But that, so that's, that's a reduction in service. And is that in addition to the 100000 that's already marked on our paperwork for the uh, roads? Yes. Yes. So in addition to that. Okay. But off of this number tonight, we're starting. <coughs> so we're so we're starting. I just want to make sure. So the 391s are in. Exactly. Okay. Yep. All right, 130. Chief. Um, most of my uh, stuff in the budget is contractual obligations that need to be paid. Uh, the capital is what it is. Yeah, we've been discussing police cars and keeping the can down the road. We're going to get to a point where we're going to have a problem. <coughs> the only new thing we're adding to the police department is one position, which I think is kind of stingy if I actually you know, had a professional come in and do a study, uh, me knowing what I can do with my manpower, bring in that extra person, in effect, three different positions on, on the job, and continue that level of service uh, with the town. Uh, uh, to not ask for it this year, it, it'll, it'll be the same situation with the growth in this town. We won't be able to provide uh, the level of service, and we won't be prepared for what's coming in the future as these calls to service continue to pile up. So how many cars did you ask for? Uh, three. And is that in the pay as you go? It's in the pay as you go and will not impact the, um, the But it's just money we could use elsewhere. And if we did that, I think we have saved it. We will invest in the future for the community. Okay, we're trying to balance all of it out. Yeah, we balance, we balance this here at the expense of the future. The tax hike in the future is going to be more painful. How much are the cars each? Uh, 47,000 cool uh, equipment. That's what. So uh, it's 150K. Three cars. Well, uh, 131,000. I mean, I think Officer Phil is styling in his sedan, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's <laughs> all all right. 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 So there's 150 there in a capital asset, maybe would not. I don't think we do all three, but we don't do zero, so. Could I just ask the chief, um, speaking of Officer Phil, just to speak again to the, uh, the budget drivers we had from our last meeting mentioned uh, a school resource officer uh, at 74,000. And I thought you said that was an additional person that you were going to be training up to assist and eventually fill in with Officer Phil. It, it would be two additional people that would be doing the uh, duties part time if available to do so, not covering calls. Phil would be a full time resource officer, focused mainly on the high school where he spends most of his time. But even then, uh, we've trained two additional 
off time SROs who uh, would split the time during the week, work uh, two shifts, and then work at the school a couple of days. So, and we were also that one position looking for them, they met the side with that one position and uh, having more supervision coverage. So we still have that same level of control. I'm sure. not questioning its importance. It's yes. just when we're looking at things that are adding staff. But I, I'm not I, to looking It's at, not you know. what it appears to be where it's just adding a new SRO. Because if, if that was the case, yeah. I, I wouldn't do it. But we're doing the best we can with one position to be prepared for the future. Mr. Chair, are we talking capital as well? When you, when you're we're talking pay as you go capital. So, our sidewalks and pay as you go capital? Mr. Brown. Again, I, I, for me, I think my position is discussing pay as you go, as you can, affect our funding. That's, that's more on do we have the revenues to do this versus how do you manage the expenses? Okay. But, but hold that for right now. Let's just get around the table and see what kind of number we come up with folks again. We've got to figure out where we are here. Okay, so Chief, uh, in my head anyway, I put you down for 50 grand. Okay? Just FYI. <laughs> so much for what you said. That's 50 grand of capital. That's 50 grand of capital, correct? Not operating budget. Yeah. Right. But you want 1.2 million down off the operating budget. Well, I just want to get a number here and then we're going to figure out how we're going to do that. Chief Slammett. So you're at zero? <clears throat> so I said it to you in the selectman's meeting. Um, the deputy's car is $46,000. And if I was picking something that wasn't going to cripple our service right now, that's what I would say. Um, it's, a, it's part of our plan. It's time to do it. There's an advantage, and I explained that all to you. So that's, you know, we're talking prioritizing. That's an easy first step for me to say we can survive to next year on that. The, the operating part is zero, and again, you just to kind of explain the operating part, we've added three firefighters in the last three years. Just on a percentage basis, we've gone up 32% in our request for services. To give you an idea of like the return, we did 1,763 calls where we did a good response, an effective response, and last year, and 303 that I measured that we didn't do an effective response. This year, we we you know we got the day staff during that heavier time period we did 1921 responses effectively but the part that gets me worried in service delivery is we had 353 we didn't get effective response so it's that number is running away from me even with the increased staff and I'm like oh I'm not, I'm not keeping with that number and that's a scary number to have run away from me and I showed Norman some of the charts we have it's just a request for service which is we want that in a timely manner. We want to get there early. And while the incident is small, is the goal. It's not even running with the population growth anymore. It's going more per thousand people. That's kind of the anomaly we've seen. Um, it's been for a long time, but it's really taken off. And it might be <coughs> down in traffic or whatever it is, I'm not sure. So I'm just trying to give you a feel for why that the four additional personnel will help with that number and take on any new capacity, but I'm just, I don't know where, whether that number is will run away. Is the deputy chief's car safe? I'm sorry, is yes. Is the deputy's car safe? It's safe. Okay. Josh? $5,326. Okay, I'll put you down for $5,327. <laughs> I'll find it. Which one? Dave? Yeah, that's Kind of mirroring John Don West telling us, you know, we do have a reduction in, in there's an architectural and engineering line item I have where we use that to bring on professionals um, to give us realistic numbers when we're, when we're looking at capital projects. Um, Don't worry, we're not going to have any of those. We're not going to have any more capital <laughs> projects. Uh, you know, it's again, it's a reduction of service, but you know, I could take <coughs> reduce it by 50%. Twenty-five thousand dollars. What? Twenty-five grand. It took you a while to get that twenty-five. Grand. Well, so. thank you. It provides a it provides a valuable service to the department. So. 
As long as nobody asks me to give them an estimate for any projects, that'll be good. Okay. I'm not trying to cut anybody off. I'm just trying to get this done. Maria. Um, I'm going to say 7,500 that I'll take out of employee training. Am I already beg, borrow, and steal for training? Personnel committee helps. Vendors don't like that I ask them to reduce it, reduce it, but uh, I'll do that. I would have had even um, under funded budget because we did realize the salary savings, but um, we've needed some serious medical consultative services this year. We've had kind of a rough year. Um, and we realize, you know, that there's a lot of risk associated with that. So that's why my budget increased slightly. Okay, thank you. Mark. Uh, just based on what we've expended so far through FY18 through January, we're at around 40% of my expense budget. Um, and uh, I, would, I, could, I could put in another 5,000, so that would be a total of 10 that I'm reducing it by. I've already got five in there. Okay. Jay. So um, the dilemma we face as a department is that we run a lot of our programs at center school. And we're not really sure what's going to happen with center school both at the end of the school year and then going forward. And right now in the summer we run our, our camps, one of our camps there, and then we have basketball in that gym pretty much year round. So. Um, you see a line item in our budget for 50000 that we earmark towards maintaining that facility for the next year. But that's a subjective type of thing, and it's up for debate. Um, I'm also in a position where I have a, um, an elected commission that I report to. So anything that I'm going to talk about, I can't commit to unless it's, until it's voted on by that commission. But that's, that's the number that's in there that is um, open for debate. I'm sorry, what was it? how much is that number? 50. 50 grand? But yeah, that would definitely have to be some parts and record that we in on as elected. Okay. Okay. The programs you're doing at center school now, is there anything you can't do at the new school? Well, the new school doesn't open until September, correct? Um, the, you know, and, and I realize I'm talking, we're talking about police and fire and stuff, and I'm talking about basketball, and it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I'd hate to lose that gym at center school because we do really, and I know it sounds silly, but we, we don't have a lot of gym space, and basketball is like religion in this town. So to lose that gym would be tough. I'd like to keep it, but again, that's a, I know that's a bigger issue long term, what to do with that building. So, but yeah, we could run basketball at Marathon School, but then it's, you know, I'd, I'd like to keep the gym. I just want to ask a question about that. I'm not sure that's where we're, what we need to hear from Parks and Rec. I think we need to hear really looking at programs and requests for services and what you might do with that. The, the 50000 that I know about for Center School is something that both Parks and Rec and the Center School Committee and the Town Manager agree we cannot leave a building vacant unattended, uncared for, and not have it deteriorate. And there's going to have to be some amount of facilities maintenance just to maintain that building until we find the second use for it. And that's not really a program or something that's that's negotiable. It's more a, a town need to maintain that facility. Um, is that what you were looking at? Because I, I was expecting to see out of your entire budget there could be something in the Parks and Rec offerings that you could scale back outside of the 50 well i think i think it's kind of understood from all the discussions around center school you can't just lock that building and leave it alone it's going to cost correct the town. correct but Not my parts of it, but the town sure to care. sure so i right. know that the town has also budgeted to maintain that facility Are you talking to separate 50, with that? they have a they have a budgeted amount we have an additional amount on top of that because the, the honest truth is we don't know exactly what it's going to cost to maintain that building next year. So the 50 you're talking about is not the 50 we're looking at to make sure the building is st standing. This is a separate amount. It's it an additional is. amount. In, in, in fact, 
who are coming back to the board with a very detailed explanation regarding how much it is going to cost on the town side to assume responsibility for center school. Yeah. Our placeholder number was 50,000. Uh -huh. Based on much more detailed conversations between Dave and him, mm -hmm. that number is higher than 50,000. What Mr. Guelph is talking about right now is a different, is a different center school number. I mean, different. It, it's additional. Purpose. It's additional to what the town is committing to. Yes. So I'm, I'm, if my commission were to vote to eliminate that, that's a significant portion of our operating budget. Okay. Connor. So I'll say right now, I went back, I already went back into my operating budget, which I've maintained keeping my operating budgets pretty much as low as they can go because I worry about paying more on this too. Uh, and there's nothing more I can do with that operating budget. Uh, unless, it, and this is what I, I said to Norman too when we discussed it, uh, unless you guys want to basically promise that you're not gonna have any kind of special election or town meeting next year, then elections isn't gonna be able to shift. Uh, I've already taken out anything that could even be considered a want. Um, and at this point, it's really just gonna result in a drop in services if I say zero right now what I'm offering on kind of version two of this budget. The, uh, the only thing I can really offer at this point would be if you want to, um, if you're looking at, at the pay as you go, pay, then you can, uh, you can take the new election tabulators. And that would be an additional Twenty-eight thousand seven hundred and fifty. Uh, I'd say that going base, trying to use the the any of the capital, even the page to go to fund operation expenses, is short-sighted. Uh, it's I, I've of all the people I've talked to at this table, they've put a lot of planning in trying to make these cuts that they already have made. Uh, we're already dropping services pretty much just to get to this point. And we're not at a point anymore. I'm, I won't speak for everyone, I'll say for me. I'm not comfortable making any further cuts to operating expenses. That's the responsibility of the selectmen to tell us what the priorities of the town are. So we give you a budget based on what we think needs to be done. The selectmen need to decide if that's what they think the town needs right now. That's why we put you in this position. That's why we put you in the hot seat. So. Hopefully you'll take so a look at it. what you're saying is you think that at the end, if we don't meet the target, we should just arbitrarily, without knowing your department or any other department, I don't think arbitrarily. just go and, go and make cuts. I think, you, I think that you need to be able to discuss it. If you'd like to discuss it with us further, um, we, I'm willing to talk to you about every single line item and tell you why I need it. Uh, we don't really have enough time to do that right now. But it's really, if, I mean, if we're talking about programs and services that we want to cut, then you guys need to decide what's, what services are a high priority and which ones are lower end. Okay, all right, thank you. Sean. I'm, I'm at, what I decided to do was come in as lean as I could. I'm at 236 and in discussions with Norman and the group, I'm, at, I'm like Connor, I'm, I'm bare. Um, I, I, I've got, yeah. All right, thank you. Denise. $5,000 in community program. I like, I like the gesture that, that the department has extended to this, but I'll be really offended if we ask Denise's department to come. She pays for herself. She brings $100,000 a year. So I think it would be, and more so, that $100,000 comes with the responsibility for us to deliver programs under grant contracts. <coughs> and thus, to ask here, I'm sure she can tell you, she, she, she can cut a position to half time. But I think it's really unconscionable for us to be asking her to do that. I hate to do this, but I think, honestly, Board of Health and Youth and Family Services, 
they really try to cut their budgets. In fact, when we make the data, we, we won't compete. This is not the time to ask those two departments to come. So we're just trying to get a feel for where everybody's heads but at. But it sends the wrong message. It sends the wrong message. There are people who count on the world. We're going to agree with you. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna clean up the message when we get done with this exercise. I love your passion too, but just hang in there for five more minutes. We're ten minutes over as it is. Denise, I would cut community programming by five thousand dollars, and as I discussed with Norman, the next step would be to cut my position. Okay. Just because we're naming numbers does not mean we're gonna do it. We're trying to feel, figure this out. Uh, no budget there. Here. I'll offer up my position. <laughs> <laughs> Cheat salary. <laughs> but, um, this is, you know, obviously this is a really, it's a difficult year. This is a very difficult conversation. And I, you know, I do keenly, I'm keenly aware that the school are 54% of the town budget. That's, that's one big, giant number. Um, you know, just like Parks and Rec, I don't want to, I don't want to not participate, but just like Parks and Rec, I can't speak for four other people that I have not had a conversation with, so it's a little bit difficult for us to just throw a number out. Um, what I want to, to do is tell you, just to recap, we already, in terms of cuts that we've made already before we brought this budget forward, we've cut almost $800,000 in personnel. We've had a savings in our bus contract that we were able to realize um, after we voted our budget. We've decreased our salary reserve, we've increased fees. Um, so you know all of that. As I said earlier, um, you know, without cutting programs, the next thing that we would do is look at what has been assigned, what our cap capital articles of ours that have been assigned to pay as you go, that we could defer or, you know, to, to another year that we put money back into the town operating budget. Um, that's the next thing that we had discussed looking at, but I, I, I wasn't expecting that we were gonna do that at this meeting. I, that wasn't my understanding of what the agenda was. So we, we are, I didn't have that list until you were not prepared to do it um, tonight. We have a meeting um, a week from tonight, and this is already is on our agenda. So obviously, you know, based on um, the new information and whatever is, is the, uh, with the construction uh, at the end of this meeting, certainly we will, we will do further work. So I, I don't want to disrespect the hard conversations that everybody else has had, uh, but I just I can't say a number because it's not entirely. Yeah, and, and just like Jay can't really say that 50 grand is on the table either because Jay doesn't, you know, he has, his, his elected body has to make that decision as well. But what I do want to say very strongly is, you know, I know this is a very tight year for everybody, and I do not, absolutely do not want to be in a position where we're trading firefighters and police officers for teachers. I mean, all of these services are critical, and if we didn't already know that, there's no better example than what happened a week ago today, um, and the tremendous response that we've had from our colleagues um, sitting on the other side of the table from us keeping our kids safe and keeping the time safe, and, you know, there's no percent that's worth it. Okay. All right, so the last department we haven't got to is the town manager's office. And given he was barking at me a few minutes ago, I don't think there's going to be much there either. But I must ask. Okay, so you're at zero. Okay, so folks, that's 360 grand. Just talking about it. And I can't even read my own chicken scratch here, so I have no idea who said what. That's three hundred sixty thousand dollars. We still have a nine hundred thousand dollar problem. So now what do we do? Or we go to the taxpayers and say it's a seven percent increase this year, which I believe will blow up in everybody's face.
But we have another meeting scheduled. I don't know if at that time, I mean, I thought Todd was the point about looking forward to, I don't know how realistic it is to have a little bit of a projection um, for the next year, two years, to, I think, understanding whether this is a one-year problem or a problem that's going to compound itself might influence the comfort level in biting the bullet for one year versus jacking it up 7%, knowing that you're going to do another 7% next year. But to me, and I'm not sitting in your chairs, but to me, those are entirely different decisions. And I, I think I'm hearing from several people on the town side that they'd like to have the opportunity to express to you in greater detail how important what's already been their budget is. We certainly have gone through that exercise with our individual department heads already and always find that to be really illuminating. So, I mean, if, if it's helpful to take some time to do all of those things. Having been on the charter committee, I hesitate to say this, but I don't think they have hard and fast deadlines, and perhaps given the unusual circumstance that we're in this year, we could add a week or whatever before appropriate. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to complicate what appropriation has to do, but maybe we could find ourselves a little time if we need to, to do a little extra homework this year beyond what we typically do. So that's my thought. You're welcome to take it or reject it. Um, I, I think that, well, I think that, um, you know, around that, around that whole topic and, you know, whether or not this is, you know, a single blip or, if, you know, we're going up and then we're going to be staying at those levels. If we think it's a single blip, then, you know, it's something that, yeah, we need to all sit around and determine is it something that we're willing to just swallow now. I think if it is, then I think the next step is going out to all the other capital articles and scouring those to make sure that this 7% hit is stays as close to 7% as we can um, so that we're not adding a lot of other things. And that's when we start looking at, you know, whatever, uh, you know, police cars, dishwashers, and everything else that's out there. Um, and saying, okay, can we wait another year or two years before we get that, depending on how big it is. Uh, but that's, yeah, so I think that that, that is the next step. Because uh, I think 360,000 getting up to 1.2 million is a big jump. I'm not saying it can't happen, um, but I'm not hearing a lot of willingness here to make it happen. Uh, certainly, you know, there could be, um, you know, I would still consider them relatively arbitrary cuts, uh, you know, because we're not in there in the day-to-day -day of each department to know how much one group is going to suffer over another. Um, you know, so that's something that uh, I'm not willing to, I'm not willing to do. And, uh, you know, whether it's felt that that's why we're put in this hot seat or not. Uh, you know, I would much prefer to have the professionals in our organization uh, addressing what their needs are and working with them to figure out where we can get what money. And then if it's determined that we can't get any more money, uh, then figuring out where we can lessen the damage in other areas and then get a longer range plan uh, so that things are more level as we go forward. You know, again, we've been, we've been benefiting, as Mr. Katina has been saying, we've been benefiting from the new growth, you know, over the past decade. And, you know, that hits certain trigger points. And this may just be some of those trigger points hitting, along with all the other new projects that we've done, whether it's growth-related or just age-related of our facilities. Um, you know, and, and it's come to roost, and now we have to deal with it. And I really want to just really thank everybody. Um, it's not easy, and I and, and I just I, and I really really love the passion. Right about it. No, no, thank you, Chiefs. Really, what's doing? Uh, all you got really. It, it, it's for the townspeople to see how much we all care. That's, it's really important, and, you know, and, and, and as Mr. Sestari says, if, if this has to be it, then 
this is it. But but at least the at least the time people know that this is what this is. We, we, everybody put their best into it. They, they, you know, it's, they put their whole heart, and mind, and soul into it, and it's and it's appreciated. I really do appreciate everybody coming out, and I really appreciate the passion because I'll tell you, as as as, as us up here that uh, doing this unpaid, it's all passion. It's all passion, and I just love seeing uh, everybody else have the same level. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say that when I looked at some of the projections for the average single family home, which were shown with that 7% about a $680 tax increase, you know, we mentioned before the concern for seniors that are on a fixed income, if they see their taxes go up that much, that is going to create a real hardship. So, you know, we're all in it together, but, you know, just for charities that people donate things to. Nobody thinks about the tax relief fund. Um, I sure would hope that maybe going forward people will ask for whether it's memorial contributions or whatever be made to that kind of a fund, but we really do need to do, think about our seniors and people in this town who literally will not be able to afford that and how do we help them. So, uh, that, uh, Let me ask one question. This Todd consultant that we had here, in two weeks he found two and a half million bucks. Is he going to be sticking around for a couple more weeks? He didn't find he didn't two and a half million it. dollars. Okay. He just recategorized it. Right. It wasn't found. Yes. It was just that he found out that we can push that off for, for 20 years. So, so we only owe two million. We so only if, 20, if he 20, continues to scrub the numbers are you confident or do you have any confidence that there will be some money found that may lower the number here? I think as has been described yes we still have some way to go in, in scrubbing our numbers however what, what we keep doing is we address the revenue the side what I'm hearing tonight from the board is that we have to address the expenditure side. So yes, Todd can do his magic, but if, if, if the board still has questions on the expenditure side, then it's, it won't solve the, the main issue for the board. Plus yeah. it costs us $1,500 a day to have one. <laughs> <laughs> and if what, what's the time frame when, uh, when we spoke before about that 10% increase in your health care premiums? I know you probably have to repeat yourself on this. But um, what's the time frame that we can expect an accurate number on that to know if, because it, if we could find some way to level fund, even if it's just level fund our fiscal year 19 health premiums, it's $750,000 off of that budget, which is a huge chunk. Well, we're working really hard because we may have been some indication in three weeks, three, three weeks, weeks. Yeah, three to four weeks. That being said, we have a loss experience. Yeah. We've had some significant health issues that has affected our loss experience. So, Mr. Chair, as far as uh, moving forward, um, I'm not sure what other people's thoughts are, uh, and I definitely want to involve appropriations because now we're getting to the point where it does affect their schedule. Um, you know, so certainly I think that any any steps. I mean, obviously we're we're including you in these meetings. Uh, we want you to be aware of what's going on. Um, if we're extending those dates, you know, we want to continue to do that and get you any information that you feel you can start working with. Um, but to me, it sounds like we should be trying to get together one more time um, and you know, have it be after what, February, have it be in three weeks? I think we have. Oh, we do. Okay, yes, yeah, that's right. 
we scheduled that last time. Okay. Yeah. So I think if we get together then, um, you know, then we can we can have again hopefully a better assessment of where we are. Uh, in the meantime, you know, having the conversations with uh, you know the individual departments and um, and then do our best to assess. You know, I mean, is this is this a one-time blip or is this going to be uh, a prolonged pattern? Uh, and then how do we want to go from there? And if appropriations can, you know, oblige us with some type of uh, an augmentation to the schedule. And, you know, from that meeting, you know, we can try to make a decision for the following meeting and hand things over to them. Very good. I say this is step two. We are talking about next steps. And I think back to the last meeting we had, where we were asked to look for cuts. <coughs> we went ahead, looked for cuts. School side did identify some cuts in the transportation contract. However, couldn't act on additional issues because they did not have specific direction from the board. We came back tonight. On the town side, when we went around and asked the numbers, school side, they cannot act because they have to come together as a board. So my question is, do they have enough specific direction to guide them on their next discussion so that at least when we meet on the 26th, it's a much more... I thought, I thought, that, I thought that the direction last time was relatively specific, um, but my impression <coughs> of what happened and I'm happy to be corrected, but my impression of what happened was that because of the movement of numbers and the fact that we got down to a point where there was no longer an override that was needed, um, was that everybody, both sides, not just schools, but town as well, said, okay, you know, we're, we're kind of there, so we can probably go forward with what we have. That was my impression. I can't speak for others, but I'll speak for sure. myself as a department head. Um, we met the morning after the last meeting mm -hmm. as a town of department heads with Norman um, reviewing in detail what we were sacrificing um, by eliminating those lines from our budgets. That was a number of days ago. I didn't find out until about two hours before yeah, this meeting. Two hours old. Uh, about that two million dollars. So that was not part of the process. That was not in our minds. We were not aware of that when we offered up what levels of service we were going to take away from mm -hmm. our budget. Okay. I just have a couple of comments on, on the process of what you're looking for. You know, in, in the past. If you set a target, this is what we want to do, um, versus saying everyone take a, what do you really need and what can you give up, that, that's a hard request. Um, what you've done in the past, I know when times were really difficult, you'd say here's a level funded budget, and then you'd make a list, what are all the initiatives that's beyond um, you know, contractual ob obligations or uh, um, mandates you know, through the state or whatever, what, what are we adding? And then we can prioritize. Obviously, uh, Chief Slam and, um, says their lives at stake if they can't answer calls, so his, his additional people may be a higher priority than, uh, is there from the library here? You know, they want to staff the children's area or something. You know, you need to prioritize. How do you know what you want to get? You're kind of throwing things out there, saying, can anybody cut? But if you really do want to get a number down, you really have to prioritize what are wants, what are needs, and, and then prioritize, because there are initiatives in there. And, and you know, when you're just asking appropriations to take a look, that's, that's a tough ask, because what do you want us to do? But if you, if you have initiatives, it makes it easier. What is the process to get where you want to go? And I think you have to list what is beyond really level service or level funding. So, so I hear what you're saying, Mike, but I disagree. Um, that's why I wanted to go around the table tonight to get a feel for what people are talking about, what's on their mind. So I don't, I don't want to get into the daily management and priorities of the departments. I think that's the, the, the department head's responsibility. 
but I have a sense now for what I think when we come back in two weeks, if we can't figure something else now, out between now and the next time we meet, I'm going to say, okay, here's what I would like to see happen. DPW, you need to operate on X dollars less for FY19 than the submitted budget. P Police Department, same thing. And just go right down the line. And then from there, you guys figure it out. Okay, so if, you, if you're going to be down $22,000, and you talked about $22,000 because of uh, voting stuff, the machines, I don't, whether you buy the machines or not, I don't care. You're down $22,000, figure it out. So I'd rather let the department managers make those decisions on what's priorities in their department, but I think we need to come through and say this is how it's going to play out dollar wise. That's where I think this is headed. That's what we've done in the past. We tried that a la carte thing. It's a nightmare, and no one wins in that situation. And we've got a lot of great people making good decisions every day. Let's keep going, but you're just going to have to do it with X number of dollars different. But that has been part of the town, the, the budget message every year for the last at least six or seven years was any increases uh, on the town side. We want to know what the initiatives are, how much they're costing, and if there's going to be any any return on that investment um, this year I think because the numbers were so out of whack we've taken a, uh, a different approach I guess to how we've been talking about the budget and we haven't even gotten down to that level where we can you know looking at each department and discussing those individual initiatives Right, so originally I think was it, we said we're going to go from 7% to 5% at 1.2 billion. So cut to the bone here, we got 360,000. So that this, that, you know, it, it split the budget between the schools and the, and the town, that would be 54 to 46. So that, you know, so that means the, the, the schools are trying to look at, you know, another over 600,000 or something like that, which is, I get but those are the rough numbers if you need rough numbers. One other comment for future, we're trying to say, uh, as Selectman Sestari is mentioning about, is this a one-time thing or going forward? And one, because we don't have a, maybe we don't have a, a budget director yet, that all the debt that we're taking on this year, is this the last year of the major projects? Or do we know if there's still more to come in the next process? Or because that, that's a fixed cost, we can't change that. So that's something that's good to know uh, moving forward in terms of how we model what's coming up. In, in fact, that's the next assignment we'll be working with Todd on. Um, so we want to better understand the next three years. So if I could just go back to what Mom just asked. Um, I think that my answer to your question is no, <laughs> we don't. Um, so, you know, and if we misunderstood the last time, then it's going to suck on me, but um, Harry gave me that word back. But, um, so last time I know we did have a discussion about the number, but we also had a lot of discussion about the, each numbers weren't firm, so that's why we stopped where we stopped. So had we, if we were supposed to have done more before this meeting, then again, so that was, I did not clearly understand that from last meeting. So I don't want to make that mistake again. <clears throat> so I would like to be very clear when we leave um, this meeting what the request is. And if what you're saying is we need to come back with some percentage of this number and tell you if we were to do that, what that would look like, you know, if that's an exercise that we have to go through, then that's an exercise that we have to go through. But as I said last time, that's, you know, that is going to basically mean that we're going to put out there that we would be reducing teachers. That creates panic. That creates people looking for other jobs. And I don't understand enough about municipal finance. And we just raised the point, Brendan, about that's a big number for health care. If we then come back in two weeks and find out that there's been yet another um, savings that we can all celebrate. Now we've already done some damage, and I'm quite sure that that's the exact same problem that all of you have. Um, and the teachers, you know, the school department is not unique. So that's our reticence. We don't want to threaten to cut teachers or programs or firefighters or placement or, or anything if, if that isn't 
necessary and, and where we're going to really go. And I know that's a very difficult stance that we're all doing. I don't, I don't think anybody wants to do that, but I, I, at least for us, after we go through our page, go articles, that's the next conversation that we're going to have to have, and that's quite that's what I'm hearing on other sides of the table, too. We're, we're talking about direct service providers to the people that live in the town. Um, and so I think the question is, I guess what John keeps saying, at what price excellence, you know, and, and I would maybe argue that excellence is an even word, but proficiency, to <laughs> use an educational word, or continuity. Um, so that's a very long-winded way of a simple answer to Melvin's question, which is, no, I don't have a clear understanding of exactly what our instruction is. Well, I think that gets to, that comes to what's the goal? Is the goal just to like like when uh, Todd was able to, to move two million dollars around so we didn't have to have an override, but we still owe that money? Is the goal that um, that we're, if we can find the money someplace else that we're still going to tax up to to that level? But if we can cut taxes at all, and really just going to, again, just going to reprioritize. Just look in there if there's anything that we can do to bring the, bring the, <coughs> the, bring the taxes down. Because it doesn't mean that we ha always have to tax up to two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, or seven percent. You know, sometimes we can look in and, and try and save some money. You know, but we, again, we still also have to look up what's going to happen next year. Is it a blip? So the bus number is not in this number tonight, correct? So it's not in our basic math of the 1.2 million. Okay. So, so as far as specific direction goes, if it's 1.2 million, sorry, it's not the same. That's the same. So the bus. It's 180 gram missing for the out of that. Yes, out of that. This is this is not. Okay. Okay. So the 180. It's not in that 390. Okay. Okay. Fine. All right. So in terms of specific direction, and I think that's what everybody's kind of sitting around waiting for, is all right. We've had this meeting twice now, and we've talked about this stuff a lot. There's lots of passion. That's all good. But I think a lot of people, our colleagues around the table, are looking for direction from the Board of Selectmen about the budget and the next steps. So one member's opinion. I would suggest that the Board of Selectmen direct the town manager's office and all those departments that report to him to uh, extract $400,000 additional monies from the budgets as submitted. I would suggest that the Board of Selectmen request that Parks and Rec extract $25,000 from the budget submitted. I just don't know if you can go to that whole 50K. I don't know enough about what's going on there, so let's talk about that, but I'm just trying to put some little guidance out there. And I would suggest that the schools extract another $400,000 out of their budget, if possible, 200 of which is already <laughs> the buses, so then another 400 would make six, kind of in my head, right? Which is 50 of that million two. So those would be my suggested numbers. I don't know if that gets to a million two, I think it's close. Actually it does. No, it's 150 off. Because... No, the million two is working off this sheet over here. So I think it's not on this sheet, but it is on this sheet. But I think the million two is here. And we're getting into. That's I think that's about that. That's yeah. Is that? What do you think of that suggestion? In terms of giving them some direction about what no, you feel the of these things. No, I understand. I understand, and I and I also I'm I'm hearing these guys saying, hey, look, you know, we've, we've done that. Um, and, you know, that leads me to saying, okay, we need to have that, that higher level discussion about what's 
and, and this is something that I know uh, we talked with Mr. Kamal individually about, you know, what's really driving these increases. And, you know, talking with the schools and, you know, trying to find out from them, you know, what's driving their increases. And based on, based on uh, an assumed leveling of growth, um, you know, do we see the same types of increases coming, you know, in the next few years? Uh, you know, the schools know their budget, you know, as well as anybody. Um, you know, projecting out to next year. I know that, you know, I'm not asking for any detail or anything, but, you know, if you guys have a discussion projecting out through next year, what would you expect um, for next year's request? Uh, you know, we have to do the same thing on this side. Again, just having, trying to come to that, it's, it's not, it's not going to be a, a science, but, uh, you know, an absolute science, but, you know, do we really think that it's being based on, uh, on the growth, and even if we grow at, you know, the same percentage in the coming year that we did in the past year, you know, do we think that we're going to be looking for another 7% next year? Or do we think that some of this stuff is going to level off? You know, firefighters, you know, okay, there's, you know, four. You know, if we have the same growth for next year, you know, do we think that that number is a zero? Do we think it's a one? Or do we think it's a six? You know? And I think we need to, I think we need to get to that higher level discussion. So I'm not clear. And I think that that needs to take place, obviously, sooner than the three-week time period for when we have our next meeting scheduled. Uh, because based on that answer, then I think we have to figure out what the next step is in the budget. So if we're saying, if, if it seems to be the, pretty much the consensus that this is a blip, um, you know, then we can determine, all right, do we just want to bite the bullet and present this to town meeting? and say, you know, explain ourselves and say we think that this is an anomaly caused by growth. You know, we've hit various trigger points and this happened and that happened and, you know, be able to rationalize it all very well. Um, but if we're hearing that, no, we think that this is going to be this, you know, this is going to be the norm, um, you know, then we have to step back and figure out if we still want to proceed that way or, you know, just start taking you know, making cuts to the budget, working with, with the department heads. So are you suggesting that we not go through the exercise yet on the dollars that I outline? I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I am because, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm listening to the department heads and, and I, I trust them, I trust Mr. Kamalo, I trust the school committee. Um, you know, I think that everybody has made an earnest effort to try to get this to where they can, and now it comes time where we need to make that assessment. Is this a one-time thing or is this the norm? If it's a, you know, how do, and how do we want to move based on that? Is that something we can answer tonight, or is that something that you need some more time? Yeah, we need we need some more time. Uh, I can we'll be asking the department heads to project the coming steps two three years, and then. For me overall, I think what, what this is leading to is if, if the budget, if this is a one-time increase, do we have enough capacity next year to accommodate a modest increase? And, and that can only come about <coughs> after we do our, our detailed analysis. I mean, and, and, and I understand that certainly whether, you know, if it's over the next week or two weeks, it's not really the runway that is necessary to make a fine-tuned, detailed analysis of this type, you know, because really we should be looking at, you know, uh, the development that's happening in town and whether we're on a downswing and how much, trying to look at trends uh, that are that are coming out of other boards' decisions, um, <coughs> and then basing projections of our future growth based on that, uh, and then we can start getting the projections of the budget, and you know. I, I don't know. I don't know how much of that you already have together, Mr. Kamalo, and how much of it we can pull together in a one-week time period. But it's not. It's not the easiest of projects. I wouldn't think. 
yeah, it's, it's not. We, we may have the data for the new growth analysis, but there are other, other factors that come that come to our revenue, but we may not have the data. Would you rather we table the discussion or the targets that I outlined for a week until we get a better feel for a couple of years of projections? And then come back to that discussion after we have those projections? Yes. It's fine, it's yes, fine with me, yeah, but that, 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 I'm concerned about timing if we're doing that, but I'm okay with that if, it, if that's going to help us make a better informed decision. But I worry about the timing of having another meeting oh, no, following know, this meeting before the next meeting to talk about the meeting we had last meeting. Yeah. But I think having at least even a rough analysis of that type, you know, again, understanding that this isn't going to be, you know, spot on, at least having some rough analysis of that type of projections for the next couple of years, it allows us to make decisions based on some piece of data rather than just you know, my particular guess that, you know, yeah, uh, you know, growth is going to be decreasing. Uh, and, you know, that's going to bring down the need for excessive increases. Um, but it so gives, us, it gives us some data points. So just a revenue Why not? I know. I'm with you. But in terms of budget schedules and school vacation week, <coughs> people not here, all that stuff. I mean, that's next week, right? The week after? Not next week, week after the following. So, and then the following is when we're getting together for meeting number three. Is that on Tuesday or Thursday? Or on Tuesday. Um, Monday is the Do you want to do it that way? Yeah. Okay. Are in a position to crank out some projections? Um, I can look at it. So then for all our colleagues at the table, everyone's going to just chill for a week or two until we come back to this again. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Do, do you want us to fall to project now two years? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, we, we will be sending out an instruction. Okay. To do. But Jay, I think specific to the Parks and Rec Department and your elected board, I know Dan's here, uh, but obviously you guys have some dialogue at you. <coughs> See where all this is, so if you guys can just get into it a little bit too, that would be helpful. Can I also, and I apologize for missing the first half of the meeting, but besides just looking at the budget, it might be helpful to see if you can delay some initiatives for a year and what the impact would be. So, you know, I know you asked for four firefighters. I don't want to take away the ability to protect the town as we need to, but could you get by with three and then add the, then another one the next year? Is there any way to smooth out these? Because I feel like we got a lot of increases this year that we weren't expecting. And so, um, and firefighters are a bad thing to use. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't use the fire. But if there's other things, you know, um, that we could just delay, if we find that we're not going to be in this huge bump in the budget, um, that we are this year in following years. So what I brought to Mr. Kamala was I did some data analysis <laughs> and I think that's the part that got scary is trying to look at, we were able to project forward population for the next five years, a really solid request for service with that trend and put it on there. And that's what got scary even when I put the four firefighters on there in a 20 year pattern of how we've tried to staff to match requests for service it was running away from us and I said, wow, but I, you know, that's just real world. I'd be happy to bring it in and show you its data points. It doesn't give you the final answer, but it starts to say to your point, you know, do you push two out, do you do this? And I'm like, boy, it's running away from us even with some of the additions we've done. We've done well tracking, you can see the tracking. And in the last three years, it took off. And I hate to have the conversation about requests for service and tell people stop calm, that defeats a lot of what we're doing in our other goals, so um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, or do you need more even after next year? It's going to be another 
two out of the four this year. So I mean, just yeah. to know what the expectations are. Right. Um, and I've tried to work with the planning board, and I've, I've had a lot of discussions with them about what they approve, growth, impact. I have developers coming in. They're only 55 we're looking at. So I'm trying to, I, I hope I can bring that to you just to look at when we're making this decision. I just want to, you know, hearing this conversation, I think we need to be very careful, and I know it's semantics, using the words initiative because that's not really an initiative it's it's a response to what's actually happening so I think the word initiative has probably a different connotation in everybody's mind especially it does I think for us at the school department so and again it's semantics but I think we need to be careful with that word Um, could I just add an example because I think Chief Slayman it made me think when you were just speaking about the process if, if, if people wouldn't mind um, because I know something that is um, feels simplistic is when for example you look at the lower elementary class size and teachers and I think it's really important for us to think about the process and where we are in it um, because the recommendations that we now see in front of us that feel oh that would be an easy thing to do came about at the end of a process and looking at data and looking and making other decisions. And so for example, I use that as an example because it's really clear to see, is that we really, uh, we feel very strongly about the importance of having classroom teachers with, our, with, with children, of course, that goes without saying. But what I want folks to understand is that as a result, we, re we reduced six paraprofessionals in our kindergarten classrooms to compensate for class size. And so to now look and say, oh, but you only have class size of 17, that was very intentional. And so the process is really important to understand and the, the thoughts and the decisions that are made along the way because it, they were made because it really improves the educational experience. And we know, and I have data to show, that when we improve the educational experience for our youngest learners, we have dividends that pay out big time going forward with special education decreases and the kinds of performances that we're seeing in our third grade impasse, for example. So when we do that and then look at the numbers and think, oh, well, we could just reduce um, a teacher there, well, right, but then we're probably going to, the school committee is going to get a, new, uh, a request very early in the year for an additional para, and now, in my opinion, we've reduced the quality of that experience um, for something that we've really been waiting for. Um, and then the, the second piece of this is that this is just the baseline, right? When we look at 17, it's the preferred number, but it's the baseline of the growth that we're all talking about where we could easily expect 20 um, by this time of next year, by March of next year. So it's an intentional decision based on understanding the needs of that age level and the anticipated growth within the classroom as well as the reduction to the supports that the teachers have had all along with the additional class size. So I just, I wanted to just kind of share that because it, it is so complex and I've listened to everybody that I have so much respect for, all of, all of us around this table and when you talk about the passion um, I think it's because of that, because everybody brings their A game. All of you, um, the board that I get to work with, um, and it just, as I listen, feel the reality that in the at the end of the day is that we truly are thinking about um, a really difficult thing, which is potentially having to reduce the quality of the services as you've identified um, in order to meet this really challenging budget that we are all looking at. And and that's why you, we all have these faces, and I, you're right, it's really good for people to listen in and hear the conversation and, and how challenging it is. Um, but, but to make decisions in isolation of the process, I think, is a mistake. And, and, and I think that this is where it's real important, because we come down to town meetings sometimes, and there's an article or something's up there for a few seconds and somebody will jump up to, I have an amendment. And they'll try and change something that people have thought thought about for an entire year or several years. Mm -hmm. And it's real important for, for people on, on the other end of that 
yeah. and Mark and, and the, and the audience right now to hear that, that explanation and to hear that explanation because um, you know, these numbers weren't just pulled out of hand and people really did pare down their budgets and everything. So that's why it's important to hear. I, and to Kathy's point, I don't question after the discussion that every single individual um, has really taken a hard look and the things that are in these budgets are things that they really feel are well thought out and, and necessary. I, I, I don't sense any frivolity uh, or, or fluff in there at all. So then it just comes down to decisions of whether probably we want to look at biting the bullet and actually having a reduced, a reduction in the level and the quality of service. Do we want that as a town? Or do we want to say we're going to maintain that and we're willing to pay for it? But I mean, I, I'm, I'm convinced that there's no one here in this room that's that's come up with numbers um, carelessly or um, in, a, in a, you know, unthoughtful manner. Okay. Like that, uh, any further discussion you want to go on these? Second, uh, uh, the Elmwood uh, SOI. And, and I think that. Uh, so I'm, I'm not clear. What what is the final recommendation from this board tonight to the town manager specifically for the first two hours? Well, I thought that that's what we just said we were going to send send back the, the town manager to look back and see what he could scrub out. And the same thing that the school. Um, before we start mandating numbers just to make sure that, that they all work out right. Okay, so that's different than what I thought was going to happen. I thought, that's so why I will ask the question, I thought we were backing off that and the suggested numbers by myself, and you were going to go to more of a projected two or three year out process and see how, the, if, whether or not this is a one year blip or this is a, a trend that we really need to figure out now and get ahead of it. So it's different. Okay, so but when we, but can, but can we meet in time to, for appropriations? And I think we should maybe be looking at things simultaneously just in case. Is what if it comes back that this is not a split, that this is what's gonna happen for the next three years and we still have to do some that. I think that's very popular. So tonight after this, so we have a meeting scheduled away from tonight, and I don't want to put Susan on the spot. I don't know how long it's going to take her to do projections. I'm pretty sure she's going to start on it tomorrow. Um, I don't know how long that takes, but whatever information we have at that point, obviously, we'll share at our meeting. We absolutely will go through the exercise, as I said, you know, multiple times. Our next step, for sure, is to look at our pay-as-you-go article. We will absolutely do that at our next meeting and we will see how far that gets us. And in the meantime, in the week that which is in between then and now, if, if wherever you are in terms of looking at projections or um, you know, health care costs or whatever, whatever additional clarity you can provide to us as to that we have that available as we're making our consideration, you know, that's great. We have had great participation from you know, Brian and often you, John and Claire, as well as appropriations. So, we invite you all back to the table again. Um, you know, and as much information as we have available, we will consider and, and um, you know, we'll keep on going forward. So, I, but I just want to caution that until until we're all at the third rail, I, I just don't want to start talking about the staff until we're, we know that's where we are. If we know that's where we are, that's a conversation that we're going to have and it'll be a hard one. But, We'll, I think we can commit that we'll do, we'll go right up to the third rail on Thursday. I, I have zero interest in seeing any staff cut, especially the one over the corner there. Um, so, yeah, that would never be part of my message thing. So, but I can commit that we'll, we'll have that conversation on Thursday. You can come or watch this on TV. So, are you clear with direction from us and for everybody? Yes. I, I think so, so so long as I think everybody understands that what we would yes, yes, what we'll be pro projecting are the likely revenues as well as the expenses. And, and based on what I'm hearing already, I think the answer is pretty obvious. 
but we will do the work. And then Mr. Sestari just mentioned the possibility of us getting together again, Mr. Chair, to hear this objective information and maybe even the same time these guys are meeting and then we'll figure out what the next steps are. Um, I think we're gonna have to know it's one of those fun times. And then the next Thursday. And then the last thing before you get into that, and, and I don't know if this is an appropriate question or not, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. I think we may have addressed this in the past. Can we set a dual tax rate based on age? Is that going to be a dual We set a single tax rate in hockey. And every year we have a hearing, it's an hour long. Every year we go, single tax rate, have a nice time. Right? But can we set a dual tax rate based, and I'm not trying to be ageist here, I'm trying to help here, by saying, okay, certain segment of the population that's done with 80% of the services in Hopkinton is gonna pay X rate, and other segments of the population that are using all kinds of services in Hopkinton are gonna pay Y rate. Do you want income? Yeah, but see, where I don't think that works is because people use different services when you get to a certain place. How about income? Could you do below a certain income? I'm, op I'm open to whatever it is to help the fixed income folks whose, whose house is valued at 600K because they've lived in Hopkinton for 50 years and they've got a beautiful cape here in Hopkinton valued at 600 grand. But they're on a fixed income from the Social Security Administration in many cases and $600 is a boatload of money. And I'd love to find a way to say, you know what? We're gonna take care of you in this process too. So the town of Sudbury has a program that I've been just starting to look at and it uh, it relieves seniors of a percentage of the tax levied on everybody else um, uh, the theory is that you know those more able to carry uh, the burden make up the difference um, kind of in the same concept yeah, what you're something, saying. something like that I'd like to <laughs> really explore that because Hopkinton is becoming a very attractive community for young families who are, who are, who are in the prime of their career, in the prime of their lives, and they've got lots of energy and lots of cash flowing. And you know, six hundred dollars, okay, my kid's going to one of the best damn high schools in Massachusetts. You know, other folks have been there, done that, and they're in a different stage of life. I'd love to find a way to take care of them and still invest in our community. FYI, I'm, I'm looking around to see if John is here. Mm -hmm. The last final foundation the county approved uh, a means tested tax exemption for seniors mm -hmm. for specifically the same purpose. That process is now going through the legislature in Boston to secure the has a special tax allowing the county to do that. Mm -hmm. But whether that translates into setting a separate tax rate for, for, okay. for public based on demographic. Uh, uh, composition of the town. I'm not so sure that now. So that's encouraging news, but we need to get them with Senator Spilka and Representative Bacon and find out where that is uh, on behalf of Hopkinton and see if we can't expedite that because I think we're, we're going to need that no matter what. Even if we've got the 5% and it's $550, I mean, you know, it's still going to be something we need in Hopkinton. I think for the long haul, for many, many years to come. And I think it would be a great way to thank those that have built this community and a great way for those that are really in on all the action to help fund it. In fact, FYI, don't quote me all these numbers. We, we did do a, a preliminary review of the data and how people based on um, the demographic of this platform. And we have a census rate. If this budget went forward, how that might be affected. We, we, we do have we, a preliminary review of that data. I'm sure it's hundreds of dollars. So, so keep in mind this little story, folks. It's going to be hundreds of dollars. If we can fix it and it's only 300 instead of 700, that would be awesome. I'd love to see that happen. I have been called, so I'm at this a long time, as Mr. Sestari is, I have been called countless times because someone's tax bill went up $20. And I would go to their house and sit in their kitchen and explain why it went up $20. Literally. That is the level to which some of our citizens feel this pain. So when they get a tax bill going up $500, you know, it's, 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 it's very serious for a lot of people. So that's why we're here. Thank you. Thank you.
In fact, it means you will get a lot of calls. Our preliminary analysis shows that the appeals may actually go up by 20 bucks. 22 okay. or 20? Um, if I recall, the $20 per month was based on the uh, full original limit for what we found was the median home value for a single senior living alone. Um, so I was able to do some analysis um, and essentially break out households into three buckets. One being no senior citizens resident in the household. One being um, a household containing one or more residents with at least one senior citizen. Um, so that may be one or more seniors and or one or more non-seniors. And a, a third bucket of one person living alone in the household as a senior citizen. And found a statistically um, significant difference between the median home values of those three buckets. So I understand uh, the percentage is a percentage, but to your to your point, um, but there are differences in their median home value between those three groups. We just all got to get our head around that for this year as we have this discussion. My kids tell me I'm a senior citizen, so I don't know if I qualify or not. I don't want to qualify. I want to pay my share more than that. I got lots of kids going through, but I, I just feel very strongly that. With these kinds of impacts, twenty dollars a month is two hundred forty dollars a year. That is a lot of money for a lot of people. <coughs> okay, sorry, Mr. Chair, I'm calling on. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, does the do, do all the top topics on stay for the for the other two? Yeah, they don't hit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. The conditions assessment of the element school were at a two, one being the best condition. And so the MSBA right now really is focusing more on funding of a level four or a level three. So our condition is still a two. Um, so it's good I, news and bad news. Well, we did a really great job keeping up our school. I believe that there were some inaccuracies in the ways in which they made their assessment and that I, that I want to seek to correct, particularly around. Um, teacher student ratio. They had us listed at a 16. We're not near a 16, but I understand what they did was they counted the number of classrooms. And we're not using all of our classrooms as classrooms. So some of the children were counted twice. 
if you go to health, if you go to the computer lab, um, and, and then they counted the classroom teachers, so the same children were counted more than once, which reduced the ratio. Um, so I wanted to tonight seek your, um, your input, any questions that you might have, um, because within a very short period of time, I would need to come and, and ask to be on one of your meeting agendas to seek your approval and your signature on the submission of the SLI. Dr. McLeod, could you could you just go through um, you know the high level changes that or uh, I guess fixes that you're looking at making? Um, it, it it would be very interesting because I think the process will end up being very much like the center school wherein they look at all levels. They look at replacement, they look at renovation, um, and they look at addition. They look at all three. And so high level, the kinds of things in terms of the building condition um, from 10 years ago have not changed. Um, we have done a roof replacement. We have done, I think, boiler replacements there. I'm looking so. at Sue, and it's not there because she's new. Um, or she wasn't here 10 years ago, I should say. She's no longer new. But um, the, the conditions, the, the general conditions, crowding conditions, um, we talk about um, access to meeting spaces, that kind of thing. And they look at comparisons to um, other educational spaces. So, but what's another really important thing for the committee to um, remember, and I, and I say it in, in because I don't know that it's something that I've shared, is this need to look at our capacity across the district for numbers. And we know that our new marathon school is, there is capacity there. And it was built in a way that allows for growth. Um, but we've reached capacity at the Hopkins School. We're very close to capacity at the Elmwood School. And knowing that a project, any kind of project, is at least five years out, we really need to be thinking as a town and planning for growth um, and, and I know the school committee wants to put together a, a, a committee to look at enrollment across the town. And so it's not only the condition, Todd, but it's also that idea of where are we going to put all of these children who, who are moving in. So the primary goal of the SOI is to, um, to expand. They will ask us both. So it's condition and numbers. It's very, it's a very detailed process, and they want to know: Are you submitting only because of condition of the building, or are you also submitting because of growth? And so we'll be submitting for both. We want to be considered for both. What would be nice for the Elmwood submission this year will be that it will be the only one. And so in the past, when it's been turned down, it's because the first question is: Is this your first priority? And it's always been no. It's not our first priority. The center school. So then it was just pushed aside. Um, it, you're right, last year it was all the same, that is true. Um, so it isn't something that we need immediate attention, but I, I believe it's really important that we continue to make the MSBA aware and that we continue to be planning for um, the potential of the need, even though we may decide that we're not in a position to act right now. It just puts us, it poises us. For, for making being able to make decisions. So in part of your description, I think you were saying that um, Hopkins is at capacity. Yeah, no. And Elmwood is near capacity. Correct. Why wouldn't we be trying to put something in for Hopkins before Elmwood? Because of the condition of the Elmwood school. So one of the things that we're looking at, if we look across the town at the condition and capacity of all of our buildings, there's some pot potential you know, depending on how we look at configuration. I know that's a scary word, but it is something that I believe that the town needs to look at um, for building potentially a larger replacement for the Elmwood School that could also look at some reconfigurations and allow for growth across the town. That's why the Hopkins is in just such a better condition. We could be looking at an addition there, um, but then it wouldn't really solve the problems at Elmwood School. And then we have extra classrooms on Ash Street for you. <laughs> <laughs> we have two portables being freed up because we're moving the preschool into a uh, marathon. But and so, and so, uh, just to reiterate, yes. if you submit this and it does get accepted this year, it's there's there's uh, it's it's non-committal on our part. Right, and it wouldn't be this year; it would be next year 
it'll be well into next year. I think November is the first window, mm -hmm. um, and there's no commit, no. Plus, so, we, you know, unlike the center school feasibility that the town had to fund, um, there would be funding for a feasibility study. Right. Yeah. Like there was the first time. Right. <laughs> um, and, and not to take everybody's time, but um, the what was it? Um, so, not to be short-sighted, you know, just because of tonight's conversation, but if it gets accepted and we decide to move forward, what's the earliest the town needs to start writing checks for any aspect of the project? I do not know the answer. I don't know this. But we'd be expecting years, not, not you know, December. I think the town can decide on their timeline, and it depend on how quickly you want to move. Right? And, and it takes time to do a feasibility study, mm -hmm. so that's potentially another year. You know, so even if you were invited in in November, and it took, so that would be November of 18, it would be November of 19 for a feasibility study, and then potentially that next town meeting of 20, maybe you would look, be looking at some type of engineering and right. starting to move those processes forward depending on what the feasibility recommendation was. Right, okay. Yeah, and I want to just, I want to repeat, I don't, I don't want us to be short-sighted in terms of maintenance of our buildings and being prepared for any fu future population growth. Uh, I think that there have been times in the past where, you know, we've cut a little here and cut a little bit there on maintenance and then, you know, instead of costing X, it costs 4X. Uh, you know, right. Fix, so. That's why you will see, you know, in this budget, um, that that's definitely not what we're doing. And I know that you're absolutely right. That has happened in the past. Um, the building is being well maintained, and repairs are being made on an ongoing basis. Um, it was my first year that we replaced the roof, so there are things like that um, that are happening. Um, but and it could be a renovation. We don't. We won't know until we go into feasibility. Um, where, but as with the center school, they looked at what that was. The first thing they looked at was the cost. Um, whether the cost benefit to renovation. Um, so it could be that. And in the meantime, as with all of the buildings. Um, so now that's that's the first time that I've heard the conversation around Elmwood uh, be, you know, kind of in that light where it could be a renovation. I guess I was always under the assumption that it would be a renovation. Oh, okay, no. <laughs> no, it's a could be. Okay. That's what feasibility I mean, that's does for us. It, it really looks at all possibilities and then um, the information that we gather through the process, and I can only tell you this because I learned it, learned it on the job, was um, this is what it would cost you to replace, this is what it would cost you to renovate, etc. And then um, the town gets to make decisions based on what the recommendations are through feasibility. So we Will that feasibility, we don't <coughs> excuse me, the feasibility study show what percent they MSDS is going to do or the MSDA. Is that going to be doing feasibility <laughs> or design? They, they, might be they, pay a, they pay the percentage of feasibility well, they as do, well. But I didn't think that was your question. I'm sorry. No, Whether the percentage the of reimbursement. Project. Yeah, percentage of reimbursement. And I think, I think that's, we have a lot of, of building project experts down there, but the, 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 <coughs> the, the if feasibility study should help set what the reimbursement rate's going to be. Okay. And, but it would be, it might be a different reimbursement rate for a renovation <coughs> versus a replacement. So, I mean, mostly at a high level, we just felt like before we invested the time and just automatically resubmitted, which, you know, is our inclination because we the building isn't getting younger, but we are maintaining it well. Um, just because of, you know, everything that we're going through this year, we didn't want to just bulldoze ahead without taking your pulse beforehand. Obviously, you're going to have to vote on it, we're, we're going to have to vote on it before we invest the time and energy in um, updating the application, you know, knowing that also you're somewhere in your process with the center school. I don't know, you know, I don't think anyone thinks, you know what that's going to result in and what the timeline is going to be. We just wanted to, before we went ahead and assumed that you would like us to go through the exercise and refile, um, just wanted to touch base. Uh, I'm sorry. I just I need a, a clarification. I remember last year at, at town meeting we were going to put through 
I thought it was the same thing, and it was going to cost us several hundred thousand dollars or something. And we pulled it. There was a yeah, I thought it was three hundred thousand dollars. There was a deposit we had to put down. We would get back, but if they didn't get it, but it's on our capital spreadsheet. I believe that what we have on our capital spreadsheet is six hundred thousand dollar cost for feasibility, or a three hundred thousand dollar cost expecting some reimbursement that we just carry and keep postponing as we don't get invited into the process so that it's on the spreadsheet and it's on people's radar screen that the Elmwood renovation or replacement is out there at some point. Um, but we didn't, obviously, we pushed that forward because we weren't invited. Yeah. But if we put it on and they were invited, then we'd have to be prepared to be, to have 600000 it, it just doesn't move that quickly, and I think that's also what Dr. McCloud is saying, that we can postpone. Yeah. And the amount on the warrant is, does include the amount that would be reimbursed by the SBA. Correct. So you have to show the full amount, because that's what the town's going to be managing, even the reimbursement rate. That must be able to reimburse you for a part of that. Right. So the number always looks bigger than what the town actually has to pay. That's correct. And we don't have that on our capital article list this year because we Oh, okay. That's what I Because I didn't see it. I'm no, no. We haven't okay. been invited in. It, you may have seen it on our 10-year spreadsheet, mm -hmm. but it isn't on our capital list. Okay. How's, how's the decision made whether or not to postpone if, if you're invited in? I guess that's probably... Well, I think I think Rebecca might know. Do you know? The question was, how do you defer if you are invited in? I actually don't know. Okay. Because I didn't know that was an option. So. Yeah. Is, yeah. I'm just wondering: is it a school committee decision? Is it a selectman decision? Is it a joint decision? Because um, it's easy to make a decision tonight, saying, "Oh, well, it can always be deferred if you know it happens, and you know we don't feel like we're in a good position." Yeah. Uh, but if we're making a decision tonight. Well, oh no, you don't need to, and I can find out the answer to that really great question um, before we go into the work of submitting and um, um, and before bringing it to you uh, at, a, at a board meeting. But so I know. Can, I, I just, I, am I correct, though, that if we were invited in, the town would still have to, to vote to allocate the money? We're not asking correct. for that. And that would have to happen at the time. So the timing would all have to be right. Well, is that the additional 300? Because I, I thought we were going to put 300 into, into the capital budget. We're not putting no. anything in anything right now. No, oh. all we want to do is submit to keep oh. them aware that there's a building project that at some point is going to need to happen on some level, whether it's replacement or renovation in Hopkinton. Um, they, they know about our Elmwood School project. They've evaluated us. They've come, as Sue said, they went across the state and they, they rated us a two. Um, so we just want to keep in their radar and let them know that at some point we want to be considered. Um, but any, any kind of monetary um, commitment on the part of the town would have to be voted. So the timing would all have to be right. And it certainly wouldn't be until the following town meeting. So at this point, there's no money that we're, yes. we're talking about appropriating or asking for related to this submission. Claire, I'm sorry, I you earlier. Oh, I just had a couple of questions. Jean happened to use the word bulldoze on that subject. <laughs> um, if we were to be looking at perhaps a renovation, do you know if then they require you to bring the entire existing building up to current standards? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Yes. Okay. That's part of their evaluation. So even though you have a serviceable building, once you touch it, Correct. you have to, you have to go in. That's usually why they don't to renovate too many. Right, right, right. It costs so much. Um, my other comment was just, particularly maybe putting it off a few years, I think we need to be doing a bit of an assessment on demographics where we are moving as a town because we've grown and grown and grown. We all know that. We also had a huge number of new houses built in a short amount of time, like easily 1,500 housing units. And it's pretty commonly understood that A, most of the big good tracts of developable land are gone. Some of that housing came from a number of very big housing projects like Legacy Farms. There's not going to be another Legacy Farms. Um, I don't want to shortchange or undercut, you know, be short-sighted, but we also, I don't, hopefully, think we need to expect that the level of growth 
is going to continue at the same pace, that there probably should be leveling off. And I know there were some towns that, you know, years ago, they built schools and then they found they needed to close them. Then they went back again. Uh, so that, that goes up and down. But, you know, just based on our land use, um, we might want to try to get an assessment of where we think our pot, how, how much we're really going to so keep going. That is, I mean, that is such a great comment, and it's something that I was really surprised to learn that the MSBA cares greatly about. It. They do not want to fund buildings that are then going to be empty in five years. And if your project does not meet their criteria around, I mean, we went through a very detailed process to get the building that we now have to be built at a certain size, and then as you will recall, we had to go back. Um, they approved the addition without the funding, but even the addition had to be approved by them, and they had a different company. So one of the things that they really care about is that they're not gonna find a building that's gonna be sitting vacant, and we, you have to go through very strict scrutiny in terms of your evidence as far as why you believe that this is a building that's gonna be needed for the long haul. It's very much part of their process as well. If you'd like any two comments, one, um, just some historical perspective. When we first submitted the request for the school that is now Marathon, it was because of overcrowding, because we needed an additional school. The intent was not to take center school offline. We needed a fourth elementary school. There was a, a dip in the population in the childbearing year, you know, women in childbearing years, which is why we kind of took a step back and said, okay, maybe we'll just replace Central School. But I think we've caught up again with where we were and we're continuing to grow. One comment. The second comment is, with all these high taxes, as soon as someone's kid is out of school, people put their houses on the market. And so, although we may have built out, that doesn't mean that we're not going to continue to turn over quicker than um, within our limited communities. So. And can I also add, I have a couple of questions. One, I believe the submission period only happens in the spring, is that correct? Right now. Which is why this is coming up now and mm -hmm. always after. Rebecca and I talked and we both sort of think in the back of our minds, which could be a dangerous place mm -hmm. for me, um, that there is 180 days once you're invited into the process to approve the funding for it. So it could involve a special town meeting which is why it generally is on a warrant article saying we want to get this ahead of time so that we can start the process. Mm -hmm. But I think that's 180 days from November. No, from the invitation. And November is the first window. It's yeah. November, February, April, I think. Right, so if it's November plus 180 days, I think that takes you to May. Well, they don't approve it until, I mean, November's when you submit it, then they have to approve it, and then it's right. when, they, it's when they approve it, because they might not approve it until March. I think maybe for the center school, the most recent project for the Marathon School, we actually approved the feasibility <coughs> study almost before or concurrent with being invited into the process because we had had a project that didn't go forward, and so to show that the town was that, so to show that that would not happen again, and that was a step that we needed to go through with the MSBA. So that might be what you're remembering, John. So typically, and some I think some towns to do vote the feasibility study so that money so that it's there to do get approval. But we don't have that on our capital articles this year, and it's too late to add it. <laughs> That's not what we're asking. We just before we go through the exercise of putting it back on. <coughs> There's no guarantee that we're going to be invited in next year. But what I'm hearing is you just like a little bit more clarity on if it is possible to postpone if we are invited in. Um, but barring that, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, so that, that being it? said, if there's no, if it, if it doesn't involve money, okay, so not in definitive, but it sounds counterintuitive that a town might be invited into the process and then also allowed to delay. Because mm -hmm. remember approval is based on there's an agent need. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not so sure whether the MSPA will allow a town to delay. That's, yeah, I mean, yeah, but that said, there's yeah. still no financial obligation on behalf of the town right. in the next month or two to submit this SOI and see what happens. I know. And we can figure it all out from there. So, so it's 8.30. So the chair, chair will entertain a motion to accept the uh, 
So uh, we're going ahead to do the yeah, we don't have to vote because if you okay. remember, we have very prescribed language from them when we submit the SOI. We just wanted to take your pulse about whether or not we should fill out the form. So oh, yeah, like, sure. Go for it. Thanks. <laughs> My pulse is getting me. <laughs> and we'll bring it and we'll bring it to you for the next one. Let's do it. We'll you talk about it when we yeah. see it. <laughs> we'll bring it forward for you to reject it later. Okay. Okay. All right. Eight thirty. Okay. Uh, uh, ATM articles. That's on our agenda. What you think you're just going to get up? What happened to our budget meeting turning into a full board of select meeting? Yeah. What What was the goal of the next? I just quick updates now that we have received all the capital after the first all the conversations. I don't tell me to worry about this. We just wanted to give you highlights. I don't ask you to review anything. We just want to be aware of what is coming. What's the total request if everything went through? We don't have the numbers yet because these are articles, not uh, motions. Okay. Quickly. <laughs> um, and, and, and this is the this is uh, report that we have. Maybe we down the of the project. Maybe a couple of articles. Are there a couple of articles? One that is the appropriation fund that runs in the future and the one for this one. And then the next big item is um, there's also the fifty and the appendix before the appendix and then there's also there's also the school master plan. This is uh, to address the impact of moving to parking on site. And then um, also want to give you a heads up the couple articles regarding um, marijuana. Uh, one will be another prohibition. Uh, and then a great general by the sponsored by the, yeah, yeah, sponsored by who? Uh, yep. Yes. Yes. We do the same thing, probably. Yep. Yeah. And then also lighting. I, I thought this would be an interesting one, Elaine. Uh, I think that's that's a plain word. Yeah. Um, I think they put it right. We never got to it in time. It's uh, right. It was a motion made by planning board to put an up the interior light jenning. And then finally, there will be a, uh, a pilot agreement uh, put forth to um, the four time meeting uh, regarding uh, clean energy collective. And this is in relation to the solar farm that is located on Jumbo Street. Number Street. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Anything else anybody has? Fine. There's got to be something else. It's only 8.30. Okay, with that, Joe, I can't motion to adjourn. So move. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Thanks for bearing with us, everyone. It's very important.